So we're backstage with Michael Slough. How's your day been? My day has been fantastic. I didn't have to do much work today, so I've been on the beach, I had a nice lunch. It couldn't have been a better day in South Beach. Really? Yes. I went to uh, Burger Bash on Thursday, yes. and there was rumour had it the year before you actually won that burger. Well, that was the rumour. It's actually the truth, yes. I won Burger Bash last year, and uh, this year we didn't win the People's Choice, but we came in top three, so out of 22 great chefs, I'm okay with that. What was the difference between last year's and this year's? Apparently two chips, from what I heard. No, seriously. <laughs> Two chips That's we lost by. Funny. Two Allegedly, chips. who knows? I Allegedly, mean, yeah. Allegedly. I think there might be money, money past I'm hands. I'm positive there was money, money involved. There was a whole, uh, there was a whole black market going on about you know, some, some trading and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, so you live in Boston now, I do, yes. and you've got some restaurants in Boston. I do. I have several restaurants in Boston. I have Radius, which is modern French. I've got the Amata. I've got Great Bay, which is all seafood. I've got also two off the Stratas. One is in Wellesley. One is in uh, the MGM Grand at Foxwoods down in Connecticut. Yeah. And I'm involved in a couple of other projects as well that I consult for. Really? That's fantastic. Keeps me busy. At what age did you realize you wanted to be a chef? Well, I'm not sure exactly what age I was when I knew I wanted to be a chef, but I started working in restaurants when I was 14. Uh, and I loved doing it. And I was, a, I was a dishwasher. I worked as a busboy and a waiter, and I did every job in the restaurant. But about 2021, 20, I thought this might be the career I want to get into. And I'm, to be completely honest, I knew at a very early age that you know, girls thought it was cool that I liked to cook. So I had a little something to do. I couldn't play the guitar, so you know, I had to figure something out. And um, do the girls still think you're cool? They, well, the girls don't think I'm, I'm cool, but they do like my cooking. Oh, hello, Spike. <laughs> They do. Come on, come on, put your face here. This is this year's winner by two votes of the burger. This match. was the one who stole it. He's the one that stole it. Look at that face. That's why, you know. That's right. This is what you stole his award. Well, I'm going to take it back next year. You can be sure take it back. It's kind of back full force. I know one that. way or another. Happy <laughs> days. That's awesome. Um, now, you have a book. Yes, I have a cookbook out. It's called It's About Time. And uh, I put that out in 2005. It's an interesting book in that. Uh, it's not broken down to soup, salad, appetizer, the way most normal books are set up. It's by what's going on in your life today. You know, the chapters are, if you're in a hurry, uh, there's a chapter on speed, if you're having a family dinner, a barbecue, if you're having a celebration, each chapter is something different that's going on in your life today. I'm going to mention some food terms. I, I, I think psychologists, they play a word game where yes. they mention a word and you say what you think. Okay, so very we're good. going to do similar with food. Okay, fire away. Definitely. Spring. What do I think of spring? Uh, well, my first thing is I think of my least favorite food in the entire world, fiddlehead ferns. They just taste like dirt, but it is the coming of spring. My favorite part of, of, of spring truly is, though, fava beans and warm weather when it starts, you know, we have such a terrible time in, in Boston. But I'm going to go with fava beans, fava beans, not the fiddlehead ferns. Childhood recipe. Childhood recipe. That would be the kitchen sink omelet where I got all of my fa uh, family sick from my experimentation. Really? Absolutely, yes. They're still digesting those omelets, I think. That's funny. <laughs> bad day food. Bad day of food? When you've had a bad day, what food do you Oh, what, what, what food do I like when I've had a bad day? There's several things that make me feel better. Uh, certainly, fantastic pizza. And I'm also going to go with a, uh, an Almond Joy bar, also. An Guilty Almond pleasure. Joy Guilty bar? pleasure, absolutely. Hey, Cheetos. I love yes. Cheetos. What about summer? Summertime, got to go with the tomato. It's a toss-up. Tomato or corn on the cob. Either one wins. Tomato or corn yes. on the cob. What's about? Uh, we can have guys taking the stage. Cozy. Cozy? I'm going to go with anything braised. Veal, lamb, beef, anything braised. I'm going to go ultimate favorite though, short ribs. Short ribs. Blindfolded. Blindfolded? Like in the bedroom. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> Oh, you're keeping it to food, right? Okay, the kitchen then. Um, blindfolded. Uh, food blindfolded. Um, hmm, that's a tough one. It is. It's yeah, interesting. Blindfolded. I've never asked that before to anybody. Well, the interesting thing is we've done blind taste tests in my, in my restaurant. And the word I'm going to use is not a food word, but I'm going to say a food word. It's incredibly difficult to um, taste food if you can't see it. Yeah. Really hard challenge, but uh, especially herbs. To put different herbs in your mouth, taste them. One after another. The That's police are here for God. I think the police are here for That's God. a helicopter with a police siren on it. I've never heard a helicopter with a police siren. I think I was I just forgot. I don't think you answered the question, Riley. Could you answer it again? Because the police are not happy. Yes. <laughs> so it was about, we were doing about uh, blind taste. Blind taste testing. Blindfold, the word is difficult. 
it's almost impossible to taste food perfectly without seeing it. But when you do, when you can really taste like herbs one after another uh, and, and just nail it, I think you've really got somewhere on your palate. You know, you've really gotten to some place. It's so hard to do to eat, like, say, parsley, cilantro, mint, one after another, blindfolded. If you can tell the difference, you've really got a good palate. You're a super taster, then. Winter. Winter time. The dreaded root vegetables I'm going to go with. That's what we're stuck with in Boston all winter long. Root vegetable after root vegetable after root vegetable. Um, you said you've got a book about called yes. It's About Time. Yes. So, what is it we can hear in the background? Well, those are the people clamoring for me to get out there and take I can already off the stage already because you put them to sleep. It is. But I, you know what? I'm going to make them wait just a little longer. It's like the warm up back when you're waiting for REM or the I like it. or you too. Yeah. This is the warm up back and I'll get out there in a little while. Guys warming Keep up. Keep it down. I'm going to be out there eventually. I know. Guys warming up for you yeah, now. Yeah, she's telling jokes right now. He's telling jokes. Very funny, man. Yeah. He's a good warm up act. He's a good warm up act. He was very big in the Catskill Mountains in the 1970s, that Borscht Belt. Awesome. <laughs> I want to, uh, I'm just waiting for this. Once it quiets down, I'll finish this off. No problem. That's brilliant. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Are you going to the dinner tonight? No, uh, you know what? I was with all those guys last night, and uh, I actually want to get out and like have a quiet dinner with some friends tonight. We're going to go either over to Miami or we're going to go to the Fountain Blue or something. Wherever the people are not tonight. You know, it's, been a, it's been busy. It's been a lot. Good for you. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I heard the restaurant's kind of Vegas and cool. It's fun. Um, you talked about your book, It's About Time. Yes. So, if you was to take one of them recipes, um, maybe up to heaven with you from that book, okay. what would it be? One last dish that I get to eat? Just one? I think it's not even just that you get to eat. You're taking it with you to share. Oh, uh, to share with everybody? If I had one dish? Well, you know what, I'd have to do something, I would have to do something that was based on my family then, if it's going to be something that we're sharing. So I'd take something out of the family recipe uh, chapter, and maybe it would have to be an ode to my mother. It was a dish, uh, my mom is a great gardener, so I'm going to go with Judy's Summer Tomato Recipe. Judy's Summer yeah. Tomato Recipe. Because if I had anything else, she would nag me in heaven for the rest of eternity if I didn't bring her recipe with me. So. Judy's Summer Tomato <laughs> Recipe. That's awesome. Is there a website where we can find out a little bit more about you? Absolutely. Well, there's several. You can go to uh, any of my restaurants are radiusrestaurant.com, viamatarestaurant.com, altastradarestaurant.com. Any of those have links to all the things that I'm always doing. Good. It sounds to me like the crowd are really warmed up for you. I think guys <laughs> do an average job of warming them up I'm for you. I'm not going to pay them this week. I shouldn't carry on with this guy. I must let you get out of the way. Thanks. But I do want to say thanks for taking time. My pleasure. Thank you thanks so much. Thanks very much. Real Cheers. pleasure. Thank you.